Ola tribe. So, today I am coming to you from a very uncomfortable place. Um, <laughs> this is a This is a hard, I don't want to even say that, but it is, it's true for all of us. This is a, a hard video to make. With all that we have been going through, um, 2020, <laughs> this year will go down in history, right? This, this year. Um, with all that we are going through. There has been a subject um, weaving, we'll say weaving through, that is very uncomfortable and makes most of us very angry. And um, so, you know, we could talk about the uh, COVID, right? We could talk about that, we could talk about the uh, Black Lives Matter, we could talk about um, masks, we could talk about our liberties, we could talk about all of that, uh, because all of it is at hand. However, I'm coming to you about the pedophilia, um, I'm not even... I'm not even ready to talk about the blood sacrificing that has gone on for millennia, you know, um, but that is coming to the surface. I believe, and it's what I've seen and heard and felt, is that all of the other things going on um, I refer to it as the pandemic. Um, all of that unfolding are all smoke and mirrors and cover stories for the truth coming to the surface, which is the um, sex trafficking and the um, blood sacrificing and the pedophilia going on. all things unfolded at a very specific time, right? Smoke and mirrors. While those in power removed themselves from crucial positionings of um, conscious knowing, right? Knowing that they uh, were, would be found out being part of the, um, being part of everything. Um, at the same time, the virus got released. Now that virus has been around for a while and I believe they were sitting on it in order to release it. Um, and then created a race war, which has just been at a simmering, you know what I mean? Um, poking at people's wounds in order to uh, again, smoke and mirrors to block people from everything else going on. With that being said, with that being said, I do not believe that we can heal this as externally I do believe we can heal it externally, I do. I believe that all the work we're doing is important. Um, but there are a lot of us who don't know how to help, right? We're just in this anger place. We're in a place of frustration and anger because it's unfolding and no one wants to know, no one wants to believe, right? No one wants to believe that's been happening right in front of them this whole time. Um, it makes us feel like 
jerks, right? It makes us feel like, what the F? So I'm gonna offer you a story. Years ago, I was in a relationship and in this relationship, I kept having interesting visions. Um, so I was, I'll backtrack it a little bit, I was at a very uh, interesting um, place in my life where I was furthering my education and I had started breathwork. Um, so I was in breathwork school and during that time I was in a relationship and in this relationship I would have visions um, and I'm gonna be very personal with you that when I and this person were intimate they would have really weird responses and I couldn't understand and their responses would make me uncomfortable um, I would get like skeeved and um, I never understood why and well I did it took me time but in the beginning I didn't understand why that their energy would create that and what was going on and so I would have these visions I would have visions of um, past life uh, intimacy with this person um, that reminded me of pedophilia and the energy vibration that they brought to the table was completely that. I felt like I, it was an inappropriate touch even though I was in this loving, intimate relationship with them. And um, I remember as I'm in this breathwork study, it was like, well, let's heal all these wounds, right? Let's, this is not the present moment. This is, I don't have to relive this present moment. I can go deep and I can heal the wounds that created this. So that was, that was a lot, right? Like you want me to heal the wound of a pedophilia. And in, in the moment, it was so um, nauseating and confusing that I couldn't decipher who was who, right? I couldn't tell if I was the being that played that role out in a past life or if they were the being that played that role out in the past life. And either way, one of us was the receiver and one of us was the giver or in one of us was one, right? Um, and so I, I would sit and I would pray and I would do all this shadow work and breathing work to come to a place of clarity of what pain the person must have been experiencing in order to embody that character. What wound they brought to the table that would create that outcome. And I found compassion. I found compassion. And I did my best to meet this person with that level of compassion. Um, they themselves didn't do the work. They didn't allow that shadow to come to the surface. And I can't blame them. That's not a shadow any any person would ever want to have to know they experienced, right? That they themselves were that person. Because for me, when I came out of it, it was they um, who did that to me. Now, a little side note of all of that. In this relationship, my partner struggled with impotence. And we were young, you know, early 30s, so there was no reason for that, right? Other than emotional issues. Um, and when I addressed this issue with my partner, they had communicated that they'd had this problem even through their 20s. If you've ever had a partner that struggled with impotence, you know 
that it wounds you, right? The amount of pain I experienced of um, not enough, right? That this person couldn't connect with me and allow that experience to unfold for us. Um, they chose to just pretend like it didn't exist. Um, I did my best to stay and assist, but they didn't want to show up for the work, so I had to move on. Um, however, that energy, energetic connection of having been inappropriately touched uh, by what I believe was a parent figure, or it was an energy of a parental figure um, wound, was something I held compassion for. And so I bring this to the table because um, it's pretty big right now. And I'm witnessing and seeing videos and things of people coming out and children communicating. And I don't want to be angry. And it's not about not wanting to be angry, but it's that Anger isn't going to heal it. Anger doesn't heal the wound. Compassion does, and understanding. So, this is my, my asking of you. Can you sit in it? Can you sit in the pain? Can you go through the layers of that which is triggered within you and bring love and compassion to the table? It is not, it is not about accepting the behavior and giving it permission. It is not about giving it permission. It is about loving them enough to know that they are broken and that, that they must heal the wound within them. Can we love them enough to know that they too were wounded somewhere along the lines that created that illness in separation from the Creator, right? This energy brings up so much The thought of even being physically touched right now by another human being, like in this actual moment as I'm communicating this to you, for another human being to even physically touch me makes me feel dirty. It makes me feel unreceptive. And if you or I or anyone holds that vibration of disgust and anger towards these storylines, then we ourselves are bringing that into all intimate relationships. That's a really tough one to accept.
we are all connected through vibration. It's the simplest of languages, it's God's language. We are connected through vibration. And so if I am strumming a chord of disgust around that, you can't put that in a room and hide it away when it comes time to other intimate moments. It's there. It's there. And so we are the problem, okay? So instead of pointing our fingers at every other being around us, thinking that they are disgusting, you're holding that disgust. I'm sorry, but it's true. It's not something any last one of us want to have to actually believe. But if we ourselves are holding resentment and disgust towards these human beings, then we are, in fact, bringing it to the table in all relationships. We are, in fact, bringing that energy into our intimate partnerships. And even if your partner isn't conscious of it, right, whether it be conscious of their own disgust of it, if it's not, you know, in their present perception and they are not hearing all these stories and um, witnessing and, and bringing up that anger and disgust, if they themselves are not even having that experience right now and you are, then each and every time you come to the table, it's still there. It's still there. So to deny that we are not part of the problem, that it's them, is the problem. We must go in and we must heal the wound within us that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you believe in past lives. It doesn't matter if you just believe in this one lifetime, beautiful. If that energy comes into your system and you're holding disgust and resentment and hatred towards these people, then you yourself are part of the issue and you're emanating that energy out there and it's creating more shame within that human being. And if you're creating more shame within that human being, they tend to play out the cycles. So anything we're doing inside of our bodies that creates a level of judgment towards any other human being only keeps them in a shame loop, right? And that makes them keep creating the same thing. It doesn't matter what that thing is, okay? So when you understand the fact that, or when I, I get it, when we understand the fact that if I hold judgment towards anything, that's not my job. Nope, it's not my job. The God, right? I don't even want to say up there because God is right here, right? God is inside of us. So the God energy within is the judge, right? But God energy judgment is the holding of accountability. It's not a pressure. It's not a making them smaller, right? That doesn't have to be the intention. It's gonna happen anyway. When you hold them in a place of accountability for that level of lack of integrity to love. unhealthy versions of love, right? Sex is a beautiful thing when shared between two human beings that absolutely come to the table 
with equal energy and love for each other, right? It's unfreaking believable. When one person comes to the table with this addictive energy and a, a need to feed it, and the other person has no idea that they're just playing in the game, right? This innocence. They don't know. They don't know. They're just playing out with, they're getting attention often, right? Usually that's how it starts out, but not necessarily. Can we? Can you? Can I? Can we sit in that energy? Can you send the love to the children and the beings that are being used like toys, like um, like a drug? And can you send the energy to the addict? Right, because it's an addiction. That addiction often is based off of their own level of not feeling enough. Their own levels of um, starving for intimacy. Oftentimes, they themselves were put through that same thing, right? It's also a place of not feeling powerful. So they find what little doses of power they can find, right? It's like a big energy boost really fast, and then they drop later on when they go into their places of shame for their behavior, and then they do it again because they don't know how to stop it. said this isn't easy. This is not easy. But I will do the work. Can we do the work? Thank you. I'm sorry for the pain that you were experiencing because of this. I'm sorry for the pain that I am experiencing because of this. Forgive me for any part of the problem that I may have brought to the table in any lifetime. I forgive you. And if I come up against any blockages that are not of forgiveness, I will work to forgive all beings who participated in this because none of us are getting out of this unscathed. None of us. I love you. I am here if you wish to ask for help. Meeting those shadows and clearing through the debris many tools. I am Kaidim. Thank you. Thank you for listening today and thank you for showing up. I'll talk to you soon.